Lift up your Bible with me or your instrument that holds your Bible and say, this is my Bible. I am what my Bible says I am. I can do what my Bible says I can do. I have absolutely everything my Bible says I have. For I am a believer, not a doubter. For faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, we're in April, so it's time for us to study a new subject. And uh, also, I want you to be praying for Pastor Linda because she's under the task of putting together last year's power sessions. Remember our, uh, all the biblical studies we did on Wednesdays and Thursday nights? Uh, she's putting that in script, so it's going to be in book format. Praise the Lord. Uh, so, but she has her plate full. Y'all got to pray for us. Because we do be busy people, so, and I don't know how she's going to do it, but I know God will give her the grace. And I won't mess with her too much so she can get it done. <laughs> you know, I mean, we collaborate together all the time. We have meetings. We talk about the ministry, how we're going to advance the ministry. We pray together. It's just so much that is on our plate as the executive leadership here. Amen? Amen? That's why you're called to minister in your places of ministry and calling and gift sets because it relieves the pressure off of us to do all those extra things. Just imagine if I was around trying to do everything in the house. You wouldn't have me too long. I wouldn't last long at all. That's why it's so important you step up to the plate, operating your position of anointing, and that way we as a body uh, can grow and enlarge and impact our world for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. All right. So let's get started. Tonight we're talking about the power of success. Power of success. And, of course, when we talk about these things, it's in line with our theme for this year, which is taking new territory. We believe that is God's will for every believer to have a successful life. Now, we're, not, we're just not talking about to be successful in your career or in your ability to make money. We're talking about success on every level of living, uh, success in your family, success with your physical health, amen, success with your mental health. We don't want you to run around here out of your mind. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'd like for you to be successful in your ability to carry thought. Amen. And have good cognizance and be able to reason, come up with logic. Even though we're faith driven, we must think. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I knew he was coming with that one because I told him to say that for you. I told him to say that for you. Amen. So, all right. Now, go to uh, Psalms chapter 11. Because uh, many have success, but true and lasting success only abides when there's a firm foundation. So we're going to talk about today, I'm hoping that we're going to cover all the components for uh, the foundation of success. And of course, in God, with God, everything starts in the spirit realm, then manifests into the natural realm. So there are going to be some spiritual components and some natural components that we must uh, abide by. Now, in Psalms 11 and 3, it says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundations be destroyed. So the strength of any building is dependent upon the foundation on which it stands. So if we want success in life, and remember now, I'm all-inclusive of your entire life, not just a career or not just a sport or not just a hobby, but your entire life. If you're going to be successful, then all the foundations must be firm. I, I, I am going to talk about within, uh, see, we got a lot, lot of ground to cover in the next couple of months because I, I utilize two months to talk about this particular session because I have to talk about marriage and family. Got it? So I'm going to have two important lessons for you on marriage and family because unless you're really, really uh, uh, having success in that level, it's going to impact you on every other level. Yeah, so when you get together and you, you have, you know, you're coupled up with somebody, that takes a lot of effort, 
a lot of work, a lot of patience, and much faith to be successful at it. Amen. Now, see, you, you're, not, you're not feeling me, but maybe this scripture will help you feel me. The Lord said that unless you live with your wife according to knowledge, he won't even hear your prayer. So unless you got it right in your relationship, your prayer life, your spiritual life will suffer dearly. So I got to come there. Now, come on, tell your neighbor. He got to go there. He has to go there. So we're going to teach you how to have a successful relationship that will in turn impact your spirit life and your natural success. All right. So the foundation is being destroyed. What can the righteous do? So the strength and uh, durability of your success will depend upon the foundation that is laid. Now, there's three things that are critical to, to your success. Uh, there's a combination. <laughs> there's a combination of things. In fact, success, it's, it's not just one thing. It's a, it's a collection of things that must be uh, consciously worked and combined to bring you to a, a place of success. Let me give you three areas um, that, that you can list right now, but we're going to go through some more virtues, but three areas you can list right now to locate yourself to where you're thinking right as it pertains to success in your life. Here's the three areas. Number one, vision. Got to have vision. I always talk about that with, uh, with marriages as well because a man without a vision, if he takes on a wife, is asking for trouble. Because if you don't know where you're going, she going to tell you where to go. Oh, Pray the Lord, that boy bad right there. <laughs> You, you have to know what you, you got to know where you're going before you pick her up because you'll be going in one direction. She's going to be going the other direction if you don't have your directions clear from God. Amen. Amen. Number two is information. You have to have facts that are going to connect you with your destination. So you have to have vision and you have to have information on how you're going to get there. Then number three, hard work. Just having a vision is not enough. Just having the information is not enough. You have to have the fortitude to put forth the effort to make this thing come to pass. Now, let's talk about it just a bit. Let's go to the vision part of it in Proverbs 29. Now, this doesn't have, have anything to do yet with the foundation for vision. These are the components of vision, but I have to give you the uh, foundation for vision, which is spiritual attributes you must possess in order to work these. <laughs> so I'm helping y'all, and I'm working y'all pretty good tonight. All right, vision. Proverbs 29, 18. You already know the scripture. I read it to you before, but I'm going to read it to you again. Scripture says, where there is no vision, what happens, y'all? The people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So where there's lack of vision, you know, there is a, um, there's a big chance, more than not, that there's going to be a perishing predicament that takes place. When you don't have direction, uh, that means you squander your resources on things that don't matter. So you really do have to have goals and you have to have focuses and you have to, ha you have to log, uh, uh, focus in on your destination, where you're going. Okay, so vision is the covenant seed of success. You've got to have vision. Amen? Vision is what positions me for success. Hallelujah. You need a vision in order to engage in the pursuit of success. So if you don't have a vision, man, you're in trouble. You're just, you're just in trouble. So you have to have vision for your life. Life will always remain a struggle without clear vision from God for the purpose of your life. That's why I'm happy, I'm fulfilled, I'm not in regret. Have you ever been along in life and you look at somebody else, you know, before you found out what you were supposed to do, but you know you was kind of going through life and you looked at other people and said, oh, they look so happy, you know, maybe I ought to do that. Then you start doing that for a while and then, you know, they get a little boring. Then you look at somebody else, oh, they look so happy and satisfied, maybe I ought to do that. And then you get bored with that, and you go through life a little bit longer, and now you're about 56 years old. 
you still ain't found your purpose and you're still not happy, you're still not fulfilled, and you're still not satisfied because you didn't been trying everything everybody else been doing, but you haven't taken time out to ask God what you should be doing. Amen. So you have to have clear vision to eliminate the struggle. Now watch this. Even in my hardest day, I'd rather be in purpose than be out of the will of God and have ease. Because I'm more fulfilled and satisfied. Even in my troubleshooting moments with my adversity. Because I know I'm in the will of God. And guess what happens when you're in the will of God? You got the grace to triumph. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Until your destination, here's the key, here's the key for you. Until your destination is well defined, no matter how long you have been working on it, you will never arrive at your destination. Your destination must be defined. Okay, you're going to go into business. Okay, what type of business? I don't know, just go do business. No, there's, there's millions of opportunities out there. Which one are you going after? Well, I'm going to try a little bit of this, try a little bit of that, and try a little bit of that. Well, you're going to be lost, and you're going to, you, you, you're going to end up being very sad and in regret for trying so many things and not logging on to the thing that you're good at. Amen, somebody. Amen. God is only committed to support what he commanded. So you've got to find out what his purpose is for your life. Every heavenly vision is sure to have earthly impact. So whatever God gives you to do is going to make a difference in your community. And with the people that are connected to you. That's why you have to find out your vision. Now, the next one we told you about was information. Say information. information. Hosea 4.6. I'll just read it to you because I'm going to get along to the foundation part because I can see that you want me to go there, right? You want me to go there. But this is, this is good because I'm helping you build a foundation. Now, information. Hosea 4.6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. He said, we are destroyed because we don't know. We don't have the proper information to operate from. So he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because, or because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, and that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God, I will also forget thy children. So vision is a force without uh, relevant information. You got to have the information, the facts about your destination, what God called you to do. Third John 2 says about the same thing. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. So you got to have information. It takes information to fully deliver the details of any vision. If you're going to share your vision, you have to have detailed information. If people connected to you are going to help you run with the vision. Praise the Lord, somebody. You got to have respect for facts. Look at somebody say, you got to have respect for facts. Facts are not a threat to faith. Facts are not a threat to faith. I'd rather the doctor diagnose me properly so I can know what I'm dealing with. Instead of me blindly using my faith, trying to hit and miss on the situation that I'm involved in. So facts are very important. Say facts are important. In fact, Facts are required in order for you to have success. Now, let's go to the last one, hard work. Go to 2 Peter 1 and 5. I just want to drive these three home before we get into the foundation. And from there, we'll begin um, um, to really build on this power of success. Now, hard work, 2 Peter 1 and 5. Okay? Now, he says in verse number 5, and beside this, giving all diligence... Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, cannot see afar off, and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. I mean, you got to work hard at this thing, ladies and gentlemen. you got to put forth effort. For if you do these things, the Bible says only the doers are blessed. 
You just can't keep hearing stuff. It's just when you hear the word only, you deceive yourself. You have to be a doer of what you hear in order to have the manifestation and the fruits of what you have heard. You just can't sit around and say, well, I heard that before. I heard that before. Yeah, you, yeah, you have heard it before and you didn't do anything about it. That's why your life don't change. I can't, you know, look, I don't like wasting your time. You keep coming to my office asking me to help you and I give you something to do and you come back and ignore what I told you to do with the same complaint. Thinking that because you're showing up in my office, something's going to change. Nothing ever changes when your mindset is the same. The reason we give you new information so that you can take new action so that your, your results will change. Give somebody a high five. High five, high five. Say, yes, sir. Got you on that one. Got you. You got to do something different. Say, I got to do something different. All right. All right. Did I, fin I finished reading that for you, didn't I? So then we understand that hard work is the womb that gives birth to fulfillment and vision. Hard, hard work. I've been working hard for over 30 years for this ministry. It wasn't given to me. None of this was given to me. I received a word from God. I acted on the word he gave me, and I started charting that course. And through that course, the Holy Spirit has been with me to guide me, to empower me, to help me. And through work, we've come to this place. Work. Not sitting around, feeling entitled, waiting for somebody to drop out of the sky and bless me. <laughs> no, I just obey the command of God for my life. I never got discouraged along the way when there was only five of us. I didn't get discouraged. You called me to do this, and now you only giving me five people. I can't do it. I was glad with the five like I'm glad with the 5,000. I have preached the same way my entire life. Amen. I didn't look at the congregation and say, oh, I can't do this. I can't give my best because there ain't, no, ain't enough people out there. No, the, the, if that's your mentality, that you have to be given a measure of success without earning it, then I'm going to tell you right now, you don't deserve it and you won't keep it. Success is hard work. That's why I'm married after 30 years. And a lot of my friends have been in their 8th and ninth and 10th marriage. I have this one woman for 30 years. <laughs> I just, you know it's going to come out of me. That's part of my uh, vision. Y'all know the four columns. Amen. That's part of my, so it's always going to come out during my teaching. Amen. All right. All right, so let me get going here. Um, go to, uh, let's see. Let's, let's look at a, a few of these before I give you all these foundational things. Go to Psalms 11. I, I told you to go there. It says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Um. You can't come to success just doing anything. There has to be a foundation laid. There has to be. Okay? Okay, see, y'all don't mind me just being myself, right? You got to set a foundation for everything. That's why, you know, when you, when, when you want to get married, there has to be courtship involved. Why the courtship? The courtship is not for intimacy. The courtship is for discovery. It's to find out if the person you're sitting across from is crazy or not. <laughs> yeah, it's to find out if something's wrong with them. Amen. Because if you, can, if you can pass that mental barrier, pretty much you can get over anything else. So you want to be in that courtship to discover information about that person to see if you can live with them. 
Because when you, when you marry them, you're going to be in close proximity all the time. There's not going to be a reprieve. It's not going to be like, you know, I, I don't want to be married to you today. <laughs> I need some rest. Can you just go to home to mama or something? Just give me some time. No, it's not going to be that way. They're going to be with you all the time. Be with you all the time. And so courtship is to find out, can we make it? Can I really stand you all the time? You know, because there is sometimes where you got to compromise, where you got to tolerate people's misbehavior. As long as it's not abusive. The power of influence is going to be bad. That's going to be a bad mamma jamma when I start talking about the power of influence because that's I'm talking about people and relationships. Because they're really going to wake you up to just falling into this facade. You know, we're always in fantasy. Oh, oh there he is. Oh. He may be a monster. And there she is. Oh, my God, look at her walk. She may be a monster. There's some things you better know before you make that leap. Courtship is involved. Then there's the engagement process where you got to put a down payment on your expectation. You don't be giving no man no intimacy. He, he ain't no ring and no vow. What's your problem? He got to pay for that. Okay, I, all right. There you go. I see Jesus. Tell me, Jesus, I can back up over this. Yeah, see, see. Now, why he really got to marry you after he didn't got it? Okay, I'm just, I'm just being frank. Y'all help me now. I'm just being real. I'm being right out there. This is where we live. This is where America is. Yeah. We always, you know, you hear all these people talk about, we don't have to be married to be in love. But let him give you five babies and decide he's going to walk out on you because there's no ring and there's no vow. Then you're going to be looking to go to the law and, 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 and cry bloody murder. This boy has given me five commitments. I'm just talking really too hard here. Let me go back and see if I can get an outlet to this. Get around it. Okay? All right. So there has to be a foundation. So there has to be courtship. There has to be what's next? Engagement, where a ring must be given. Then there must be a ceremony where vows must be taken. Got it? And even before all that, there has to be premarital counseling just to help you deal with the hard questions. If we could at least do that, we could at least help prepare you for the bumpy road ahead. Amen? All right. So that's how you set foundation. You just don't say, mm, girl, you're so fine. You're like sunshine, baby. You blow my mind. And then you just jump into a relationship off of what you've seen on the outside. So you set a foundation for everything you do. Everything. Say it. Everything. You don't even let babies come on accident. You plan for those babies. You plan for them. You need money. Say money. money. Six, eight children, you ain't got no money. What's wrong with you? Okay, okay, if you got them, it's okay. Just go ahead, God will help you. But you should have prepared because now you got to work two and three jobs and you can't even enjoy them because they take money to raise. And then we're not even talking about the money she needs. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's move ahead. That, we're talking about foundation, right? All right, I'm, I'm using that marriage thing just a little too much, I think, because y'all are looking at me really weird. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Go to Jeremiah 17. You can get success by other means. You can. You can get success by other means. I'm going to show you what the scripture says about that. 
in, in Jeremiah 15, 17 and 11, it says, As the partridge sitteth on eggs, and hatcheth them not, so he that giveth riches, and not by right, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. So you can go by other means. Now I'm just setting you up for the foundation I got to set because I want you to understand in the kingdom, God requires you to operate a certain way on a certain level. You just can't do, you know how some people, they're con artists in the world. And they come into church using that same con. It don't work in the kingdom. You may get over on a few people before God finally snatch your coattail. But God don't work with your con-like ways. He doesn't accept them in his kingdom. And so you can end up on a sideline somewhere. So it's very important now that you understand there's different ways to be successful. And you got to choose the right way. Now, go to Proverbs 13 and 4, and then we'll look at verse 11 as well. It says, the soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Then in 11, verse 11, wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. So we can see the way of God is the way of working and laboring. So we see vision, we also see information, and we can see hard work. That's the way to have lasting success. Now, in the kingdom of God, when you do it his way, now, Pastor, motivate me to do it his way because you know, I, I need a little motivation because it's real easy for me to just go knock somebody upside the head and steal what they got. Okay? But I just told you the negative of that is it won't last and you'll end up being a fool. Because even if you escape jail, pretty much somebody going to do the same thing to you because what a man saw of that shall he also reap. Amen, somebody. So let's show you the right ways. Let's show you this, that success, it comes from God. And is guaranteed with security. Now watch this. In Proverbs 10.22, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he, God, addeth no sorrow with it. So when you do it God's way, he doesn't add sorrow with your success levels. Let's go to Psalms 35 and 27. It says, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous call. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which have pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God even likes it when you're successful. God wants you to be successful because he's a successful God. And so he wants you to reach out, stretch out, and obtain success in your life. He just wants you to do it right. Amen, somebody. Job 36, 11 says this, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. So we have a security, a guarantee for us. But God not only wants you to be successful, he'll teach you how. Go to Joshua 1, 8. Joshua 1, 8. And I'm going to read it to you. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So God taught Joshua how to have amazing success after his mentor and spiritual father had died. And he was left with taking his place to take three million people into a promise that he didn't know how to do. So God taught him how to be successful. Psalms 32, 8 says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. Look at that. God said, I'm going to teach you. Now, I got I to gotta be stirring you up because if you want to do this God's way, I'm going to teach you some foundational truths that are going to put you in a place of clear revelation. You won't make the mistakes you used to make. All you got to do is work this word. I'm telling you the word works. Say it, word works. Word. Tell your neighbor the word works. word works. When I reveal secrets to you and you work those secrets, it automatically accelerates you. You're getting ready to go ahead. You're going to be successful. That's a fact. Amen, somebody. All right. 
Now, let's look at how God does this. He said, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eyes. Go to Psalms 119, 130. We understand and know that God does everything by his word. Amen, somebody. So lasting success has to do with the word of God. So Psalms 119, 130 says, the entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. So the light of the word shatters the, shatters the darkness of failure. When you have the word, it, re, it reveals, uncovers, and shatters what's trying to prevent you from having success. Amen, somebody. But you got to depend on God. Now, Psalms 119, 18 says, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. So we need our eyes open to the secrets of success contained in his law or in his word. Why? Because revelation is the backbone for divine success. He has to reveal it to you. He has to enlighten you. Amen, somebody. So until the Bible is open to you, you can't have true success. You have to have the revelation of his word operate in that word. Then this whole realm comes open to you. This is where I got to get you to a place to, I have to condition you so that you can receive revelation because not everybody receives revelation. Remember that boy Peter? Jesus comes up and says, who do men say that I am? He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, my father revealed this to you. You couldn't pick this up with your human understanding, with your natural senses. My father in heaven revealed it to you and because he revealed it to you I'm gonna give you these keys revelation puts you in place to receive supernatural secrets hallelujah somebody hallelujah anybody okay so now revelation now is going to be the secret behind your acceleration you going to great heights you accomplishing the vision the John 1, 1, 5 says this, and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehendeth it not. You need revelation about your situation. When you're in darkness, you're, you are in a stuck, you, your situation is in sabotage. You're, you're stuck. You, you are limited on what you can do and accomplish. But when the light comes, the wisdom comes, it gives you the resolve on how to troubleshoot your situation. Now, I want to look at Job for a minute. Job 29 and 4 says, As I was in the days of my youth when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, when the Almighty, he tabernacle, his, his vessel, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me, when I washed my steps with butter and the rock poured me out rivers of oil. He's talking about he had insights that his friends didn't have. Revelation secrets that God had given him. That's why this boy was one of the richest boys in his region. Satan himself agreed to it that God had highly favored him and given him revelation that excelled him in the region. Satan said this about him. Has thou not made a hedge about him, about his house, about all that he hath on every side, and have blessed the works of his hand, and his substance is increased in the land? Satan looked at Job and began persecute him because of what God had enlightened him to do. My God. Thank you, Jesus. So then, with that, let me give you the building blocks for the foundation that's going to take you into your success. Anybody interested in being a success in life? Yeah. On every level of life? Yeah. All right. Then let's talk about the building blocks. Now, you're going to know some of these building blocks, so don't go, oh. <laughs> I need you to receive them as students of the word. First building block is redemption. Redemption. Mark 4 and 11, go there with me if you can. But this redemption is salvation from your sins through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Look what it says. And he said unto them in verse number 11, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. I'm telling you that, that when you're born again, you put yourself in a place where the light of revelation shines. You are now qualified to inherit things that you had not been qualified to inherit before. Watch. 
He said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Only to the born again is given to know the mysteries. It's given to you to know the mysteries. It's given to you to know the mysteries. But you got to be redeemed. The wicked cannot know this. <sighs> Are you still with me? So you being born again is the first level of receiving the, the, the revelation of God's truth. He says, unto you is given to know the mysteries of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sin should be forgiven them. So there are things that only the saved know. Amen, somebody. Go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10, we're talking about the redeemed now, the redeemed. You have to be his and hear his voice to get revelation, to get illumination. Hallelujah. I was, I was in my office. Uh, when was I in my office, office today when you came down to visit me? Sometimes she had to come from her lofty place in the upper stairs. <laughs> you know, her office just is all decked out. It's so beautiful. And sometimes she'd come and visit me in my, my cave downstairs. <laughs> she put me in a little place away from the people. <laughs> she says, I'm junkie. <laughs> but within that junk, revelation doth pour. <laughs> she come down to visit me this morning. Yeah, I went to throw her some revelation on her. <laughs> she said, oh, my God. I said, okay, girl, get off me now. I'm all right. That's enough. <laughs> ah, oh, but God was dealing with the boy on some revelation. I told her, okay, this is, this is too much for me. I might have to put this in the book. That, this is incredible revelation. She said, oh, that's deep. That's, that's way, that's deep, brother. But I'm positioning you that you would receive revelation. Okay, watch this. To him, John 10, 3, John 10, 3, to him the porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice. Talking about the shepherd. He calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. You have to be redeemed. You've got to belong to God in order to hear from him and receive the manifestation of revelation in your life. If you're going to get revelation, the light, the wisdom of God, you have to belong to him. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen, amen. And he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Until you become one of his sheep, you will never understand his language. You didn't even hear what I just said. Yeah. Till you become one of his sheep, what? You will never understand his language. How many have dogs? Raise your hand, please. All right. Do you understand your dog when he barks? No, come on, please. <laughs> come on. I mean, I mean, you have a sense of something. But now, let me ask this question one more time. Stop messing up my examples. Can you interpret a bark? Okay. So when he goes, woof, 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 do you know what he's saying? So to you, he's barking. To another dog, he's talking. Can you understand a, a sheep? I guess that's how they sound. I don't know. That sounds like a pig right there. To you, they're bleeping, but to another sheep, they're talking. In order for you to understand what they're saying, you would have to be in the sheep rim. So in order to understand what God is saying, you have to be in the spirit rim. Your spirit has to be reborn for you to receive the knowledge of God. Yea, even the deep things of God. You must be his. But he doesn't reveal his secret to those of iniquity. Ooh. Okay. Redemption. Would you like one more? Consecration is the next foundational building block. First, got to be his. 
Next, there must be consecration. Proverbs 1, 23. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you and will make known my words unto you. So when you, when, when, when you get consecrated, see, you, your level of consecration determines the depth of the revelation you receive from God. The closer you get to God, the more he reveals to you. If you only hang outside the fringes so that you can kind of do what you can do and get away with what you can get away with, he won't reveal to you his secrets. Jesus referred to that in Mark 4. We just read it. He says uh, those that are outside. What he meant by that was those that are outside the covenant. But you can belong to him and still be outside. See, you, you have to consecrate yourself to this type of life. You have, to, you have to change up on some behavior. You got to change up on some of your words, the way you talk to people. Some of you, you know, can really control yourself here in church. But if I was to sneak up behind you in a public place, now just as sure as I said that it's going to happen to somebody. When he said those without, he was talking about two people. The people that don't know him and the people that do but live their life like they want to. You can't receive revelation from him. Why? Because you've gone back to your old ways. When you go back to your old ways, it separates you. You get far away from him. If you want what God has for you, you got to consecrate yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to live differently than how you're living. See, there's a scripture that talks about people outside. It says, for without are dogs and sorcerers and homemongers and murderers and idolatry and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. These people do not live consistent, consecrated lives. So they won't be able to enjoy revelation from God. You got to get that life right. I know people think they can do whatever they want and God will dismiss it and just lavish them with the, with the inheritance of the saints. That's not true. Please, I'm here to inform you. That's not true. Like some people think, okay, well, you know, you know, well, um, I, I really don't have to claim Jesus. You know, you know I, don't, I don't have to live that way. You better be careful. Because there's a scripture that says, he that denies me before men, I will deny before my father and his angels. You got to stop thinking worldly and manly and humanistically as though if you decided, then that makes it okay. You know how our world does? We, we kind of like, you know, the church speaks out and says this is immoral. We pass a law and legalize it. We think that changes the mind of God concerning it. And it does not. God says it's still stenching my nostrils. And then we have these type of people who want to try to think they can exegete scripture. Have no consecration, but you want to be teaching people how to live? There's another spirit involved in that. All right, y'all. Okay. I don't want to leave you on this bad spot right here. <laughs> so I'm going to give you one more and close it. Uh, another one of the foundational principles for success in life is unction. Unction. Of course, when we talk about unction, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Yes, you got it. The Holy Spirit. Go to John chapter 16. Jesus taught about his ministry. He said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Look at Jesus. I got a lot to say to you, but you can't even bear what I have to say. 
How be it? Look at Jesus. I'm not going to leave you without understanding your revelation. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Now, you guys got to start listening to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Because you, 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 now understand, if you grieve him, he'll be quiet on you. So you got to start listening to his promptings. And you know you've had his promptings. He's even told you to shut up before you made your mistake. Am I right about it? You was about to go overboard and say the wrong things, and the Holy Spirit checked you in your spirit, and you felt right quick a pause. You, you went. Because you can feel him in there saying, this is not the right thing to say right now. It was the unction of the Holy Spirit trying to lead you by giving you revelation of the situation. Don't say that. But what did you do? I know I shouldn't say this. I just got to give you a piece of my mind. You can't do that a whole lot or you'll start losing out on his ministry. You can't keep ignoring him, denying him, refusing him, resisting him, and then when you study, you think, reveal the truth of God's word to me. It doesn't work like that. It works by you accepting his ministry obeying his promptings, his unction, so that you can get so familiar through your fellowship with him that when something is dire and critical to your life, that you will hear him very clearly as he reveals things to you. Some of you have made bad business deals. The Holy Ghost would have loved to sit at that table with you and negotiate it through you. And won a big contract for your care. But you have to fellowship with him. And you can't deny him. Amen, somebody. Amen. Go to 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. This is my last scripture. It says, but as it, is, as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Whoo! God has prepared some stuff for us because we love him. A few of you do at least. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. There's a protocol. There's a process. There's a system. God will talk to you, like Jesus said, through his spirit. This is why it's so important that you stop Pushing him down. You stop negating his unctions. In church, he tells you, okay, now I know you, I know this is not your nature. I know that you don't you don't do worship like this, but go ahead and, and put your hands up and give God some glory. I'm not gonna do that. See, I'm trying to teach you on a practical format because a lot of you fall into things of this nature when he's given you an unction and you just don't obey. And then you keep making these mistakes. You keep getting into these situations that he could have led you to avoid. So you got to start walking with this walk. This is a walk, y'all. This is a walk. This is a lifestyle. This is not when you want to. Well, when I come to church, I feel good. I'll lift my hands. No, it ain't about you feeling good. It's about you following the unction of the Holy Spirit. Being led by God as he teaches you through his spirit. Okay, watch this, watch this. It says here, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. 
For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. You really have to start respecting the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Because that is who God is using. God is using the Holy Spirit in this dispensation. I think a question came up in the school. Yeah, it was in the north. I haven't answered that yet. About can we, I think they said, uh, can we, how did they do it? Pray to the Holy Spirit. I think that's what they were saying. Pray to the Holy Spirit and, uh, and ask him. Something they was doing with prayer and the Holy Spirit. They were sent to me in the email. I have yet to, to answer that for them. But the Holy Spirit's function is not to be worshipped. The Holy Spirit function is to teach you how to worship. That's his function. He was sent to show you stuff, to lead you, to help you to go to the one that made you. So you got to listen to his unction. You got to follow his lead so that he can reveal to you the deeper things because he knows the heart of God. And he can reveal when God is talking. He'll start talking to you. I tell you, some of you have known that he has been talking to you because when I'm preaching, he'll start saying stuff to you about what I'm preaching. I'm trying to get you familiar with his voice so that when you're out of here, you know how to pick him up. You know that when I be teaching sometimes the Holy Spirit say, now you know you just did that the other day. <laughs> and you, and you, yeah, that's right, but not now, not now. Oh, he'll tell you, he'll give you a thought and give you a, a scripture and immediately I'll go to that scripture. I'm showing you how to pick him up so that when you're in your car and, 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 and he starts talking to you about certain stuff, you will concede because he's ready to lead you into the deeper things of God and reveal the revelation of God to you that's going to take you to your place of success. I remember early days, in the early days of Sister Linda. You know, we was young, feisty. She's a good fighter, and so was I. And sometimes we get in these little, you know, you know, back and forth disbursements, right? So I'd be coming home from work and the Holy Spirit say, stop off at this grocery store and buy her some flowers. I, I can hear it in my spirit. Stop off at this grocery store, buy her some flowers. I slow up. <laughs> I'm looking at the grocery store. Nah. <laughs> Get home, right? <laughs> we start having an exchange. And out of the exchange comes out of her voice, could at least bought me some flowers. peaceful night that night <laughs> but he will help you 
Amen. Now, I got to close up. It's, it's too late. Close your Bible. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. Now, I'm giving you the foundations of success. If you're going to take me lightly on this, you're not going to. You're not going to succeed because it all starts with spiritual principles. I got to set the foundation. You got to be so you got to be so driven to have success that you're going to be like a freshman student. And you're going to sit under me and you're going to eat the milk of the word. So you can grow thereby. Amen. So that once we give you enough information about this item, this success item, you're going to be able to consciously and purposely put these things in operation and see the difference. I'm not teaching for response. I'm teaching for impact. I need this to get into you such a way that you immediately implement and see a result. Not so you can feel good, because you know with me, you're going to feel good. Because I got all these little gifts going together, humorous. I can bring you out a humorous moment right into a serious moment, back to laughter again. That's not the fruit of my labor. The fruit of my labor is that you found yourself and you sense that God is trying to take you to a place you've never been before. And through my mouth, the instructions to take you to a higher plane are filling your ears. And all you got to do now is take what you heard and put it into operation. Amen? Amen. So this Sunday, I expect you to obey the unction of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let's get ready to receive our offering for tonight. We're going to